Carly Boo, fantastic to meet you today. Fantastic to have a chat with you. Whereabouts are you today? Um, I'm home here in Wilmsville. So, um, yeah, I've been, I feel like I've been here all year. What has it been for you? Because clearly for an athlete who's used to travelling so much and playing and being outdoors and practising and working with your coaches, what's it been like for you? Yeah, it's been, it's been surreal. Like, it's just, I always, like, I'm always on the road. And this year being really stuck in one place. And normally when I'm home, I'm either out seeing friends or playing golf or going to the gym. So literally my my typical daily routine even when I'm at home has completely changed so um yeah it's been it's been nice to have a bit of a break but I think it, it went on a bit too long so I'm glad we've got a, a schedule um coming up uh, next month yeah and that schedule is going to be obviously very different than what you would have expected this time last year what does that look like for you now what, what, what's the next few weeks the next few months look like I'm playing Scottish Open and British Open, and they're both in Scotland. So they're from mid-August to the end of August. Um, and I think the main thing that's going to be massively different is the fact that we're not going to have crowds. Um, and my family, of course, obviously being in Scotland, me Scottish, you know, they would all love to have come and watched. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a shame, but, you know, at least we've got tournaments and we can get playing again. And then I think the rest of the season, I think we've hopefully got a few events in there uh, with the LET. So fingers crossed we, we have a few to, to end the season. You mentioned your family just there. and You come from a particularly sporty family and I know that Commonwealth Games are in there somewhere and the Special Olympics are in there somewhere. So can you kind of give me a bit of a feel for how you got involved in golf? Because it's a pretty sporty family. Yeah, my dad was... Uh, a silver medalist at the Commonwealth Games for wrestling. And he uh, also went to the Olympics. Um, my brother Paul has been to the Special Olympics in Poland and won four gold medals for powerlifting and the LA World Games for, for powerlifting. So that's also something I did um, to raise money for disability powerlifting myself for them. So hence why the connection being involved with this is something I'm passionate about. Uh, and then my older brother Wallace, he's a golfer too. We were brought up on a hundred acre farm, which my dad ended up building a bit of a golf course in the garden. So it was there for me at just a young age. And, you know, I had the opportunity to try all sports, but golf was the one that stood out for me. And I decided to, to actually take up as a career. When you started, you started as a pretty young girl in what I guess even today is kind of pretty much male dominated in terms of the numbers of people that play it. You know, you, you were a very young girl getting playing and you became very good very quick. So what important lessons have you learned from that? Well, I mean, for me, it was just, it's just, it was just the way it was, you know, growing up with two brothers, I was always around boys, uh, junior comps, always around boys, it was just the norm for me. Um, I guess it made me stand out a bit more at a young age, being less girls around. Um, but, you know, personally, I think being in the sport and what it's done for me, um, emotionally as well like and physically and it's really it showed me a lot of patience it's also shown me like a lot of independence i went to america on a scholarship at 14. um you know i think it's also a sport where well it's anything anything in life worth having doesn't come easy so it was a lot of discipline a lot of hard work a lot of lonely times a lot of travel um so it's it's been quite journey and i think the main thing i've learned also throughout you know my 10 years on tour and my amateur career um with a lot of expectation to do well was you can't please everyone so that's kind of what i've learned tell me a little bit about that experience in the states because going to going to the a different continent at 14 years of age that's quite a that's quite a big step yeah, it was it was tough. Uh, like like I said, it was um, it gave me a lot of independence, uh, which is always a good thing. Because obviously, I turned pro at seventeen, so I was still young, and then traveling the world 
still at you know that age so it it did help me grow up a bit quicker um it was you know it's good to see like my dad made me go because the opportunity was there and he wanted me to obviously be the best welfare I could be and, and compete against the, the best in the world. So, you know, again, it's just experience, which, you know, gained, you know, more insight to what I could achieve or what, um, what was ahead of me as a professional golfer. So, um, you know, I, I take every experience with a pinch of salt, whether they're good or bad. So, um, no, it was good. I made some great friends and, still in touch with some of them today any advice that you might give to people that are having a tough time you know they're trying to develop their career they're trying to become the best player they can they're meeting a lot of frustration what advice would you give them i think personally it's just you know if you're passionate about something you know you just gotta really focus and and if you, if you want to be better than everyone else you've got to work harder so again like what i said just before you know nothing worth having comes easy. So I think if you, if you love what you do, it's kind of like you never really have to have like work a day in your life, people say, but it's a lot of grafting and it's a lot of hard work. So, but you know, if you do it and, and the results come, it's, it's the best feeling in the world. Tell me a little bit about the fundraising that you did for your brother. You said that you got involved in some fundraising for the Special Olympics. Well, the first one I did was a skydive. So I raised money doing a skydive uh, for their trip to, to Poland, actually. And that just kind of covered uniforms, certain new equipment and stuff. So that was kind of my first way of, of helping out there. And then I followed that by doing two golf days, which, you know, again, one of them kind of helped pay for the LA trip and um yeah because uh, it's sad really because they're there representing great britain and you know th th there's no financial help and it's quite sad that my brother's representing his country but my mum's paying for it so and it's uh, well as well as all the other athletes my brother's traveling with so it's just it's a shame that there's not more um financial support there for them by by going to the special olympics what did it mean to your brother you know, for me, I think personally, growing up, you've always had my oldest brother, Wallace, representing Scotland. And, you know, he was uh, one of the best Scottish uh, squash players and then rugby and, and then golf. He was always in the newspaper for, you know, playing Walker Cup and things. And then myself, again, always in the newspaper with my golf and my gymnastics and things. So I think it's kind of nice the fact that Paul with his Down syndrome as well, it's, it's, it, he's not the odd one out. Like he's, he's just achieved just as much as we have. So I think it's just shows that anyone can do it. Um, if you set your mind to some things. So, you know, we're so proud of him and it's just nice to, you know, he showed us up now, like four gold medals. And, and I just think the experience for him himself to just be able to go over there without my mom, without having, you know, going there with a team of people, learning to socialize, you know, doing something he loves and, and actually achieving a medal. I think it's just such a great experience for him and he'll have that forever. So I just, you know, I'm really proud. I'm a proud sister. Quite rightly so as well. And make sure you give him our congratulations, would you? Yeah, we'll do. He said he's retired now. He said I'm going to go into coaching. <laughs> Obviously, Edgar is all disabilities. So we have physical disabilities, sensory disabilities, intellectual, neurodevelopmental disabilities. It's the full. It's the full spectrum. And for some players at the moment, we don't have full categorization to get into the world ranking. But we're working on that really hard with our medical people. But yeah. what was it about Edgar that made you receptive to our approach? Because you, you're not an ambassador for just anybody. And for us to have you as an ambassador, there must be a reason for you to be receptive to that. Um, well, obviously, my manager, Daryl, he kind of um, spoke to me about it and, and, and asked me if, you know, is this something I was interested in getting involved in? And, you know, it is because, you know, I have a passion for helping others. I want to see 
anybody, it doesn't matter, like you say, any disability or non, like to be able to have the chance to achieve something for themselves. And of course, being a golfer and wanting more people to get more involved with golf as a sport, um, you know, it just seemed quite fitting. So, um, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm looking forward to being part of the team. Great, well, we're really looking for you to be part of that team. And we've got 12 enthusiastic Edgar advocates that are all waiting to meet you. They'll obviously do that sometime over the next few months and year. Pleasure. Also, you know, I, I try and do a bit with Scottish golf to, to just get more girls more enthusiastic into the game. So I, I think that's also something which we spoke about before is just getting more females, you know, and if that's something I can do, then that's great. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Well, I'm sure you're going to get lots of females that are going to be looking and saying, <laughs> we, want to, we want to be part of what Carly's doing, what Edgar's doing, so that'll be great. And I'm sure that a few of them will challenge you as well at some point. Uh, I, love, I love a challenge. Oh, so, yep, <laughs> I'm all for the challenges. <laughs> so what are the main benefits that you find from playing golf, Carly? No, it's not, it's not so physically demanding, which is quite good for, you know, anyone with any kind of ability. Um, it, you know, it gives you fresh air. You, you get out to walk, you get your exercise. Um, it's, a, a, you know, a sport where you can also be at any level and all play together and, and, and it can be in a social environment, which, you know, I, I know like so many athletes that, you know, do successful in their own sports and then they take up golf because it's just something that, you know, it, it, and it's exciting, you know, when you hit a good shot, you know, you want to do it again and, and then you'll hit 10 bad shots, but that one good shot gets you coming back next time, you know, so it's just a great way to, it's, it's a sport that I've really been able to interact with all different kinds of people. I've met so many amazing people through this game. And um, I think it would be just nice for other people to then meet maybe other people with dif different disabilities and make new friends. I think that's the main thing, just make new friends and, and have a hobby and, and do something that they can improve on each day. You won the Czech Masters last year and had some great momentum going into 2020. So how has the enforced break been for you? Uh, I think last year, you know, I really focused on, on that goal. I set three goals last year and I, and I did all three. So I think part of it was obviously a weight off my shoulders to win again because I hadn't won since 2012. Um, so that was a relief, I guess. Um, I also was ready for a bit of a break, to be honest. So I, I took Christmas off and I decided not to do Australia at the start of the year, just to have a little bit more time to just enjoy something else and, and be home with friends and family. But then obviously when I was ready to get going again, we couldn't, so um, my time off went a little bit longer than expected. But um, I think at least now, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to kind of getting going again. I, I think because with everything going on, the decision for us all to, you know, our category we have going into this year doesn't change going into next year. So at least that takes a bit of pressure off people that, you know, don't feel like they've got or had, had enough practice or don't feel they're in it. In the in the, the most competitive um, headset headset. So I think it's kind of nice because I can go to the British and the Scottish or play the rest of the year, just just because I wanna. And it, you know, you, you're playing for money with no pressure. I've got my card for next year, so it's just going for a bit more fun, really. So which is quite nice. It's just that takes just that little bit of pressure off. Great, Carly. Thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate sure. it.